Memory safety in C and C++ is a very big topic. In fact, this is one of the primary reasons to criticize C and C++ programming languages. And I don't think it will be an exaggeration to say that the invention of things like garbage collector and memory safe languages has its origin in the memory safety issues of C and C++. Nonetheless, the ecosystem, the uses, the applicability and the availability of C and C++ programming languages and the software written in that is huge. Which means we will not only write new code in C and C++, we will have to maintain numerous codes written in C and C++ earlier. Fortunately, today we have tools which have evolved to help us to address some of these issues related to memory safety. And one such tool is called Sanitizers. It was created by Google but now part of LLVM which means you can make use of it pretty much without installing anything including in your GCC and CLAN as well as in your IDEs. In this video, I am going to talk about two sanitizers called Address Sanitizer and Leak Sanitizer. And I will show you how you can make use of that. So I am going to make use of G++ and I will show you how you can use these tools to prevent some of the obvious memory safety errors in your C and C++ programs. So let's go ahead and start. Let me start by showing the version number I am going to use for G++ at the time of recording this video. This is the version number. So let's go ahead and see how these sanitizers can help us. So I'm going to use address sanitizer first and leak is part of the address sanitizer. So let me first go ahead and use a file called first.cpp. So the very first thing I'm going to show to you is that how this sanitizer can help us to identify dangling pointers. For example, let me create a array of 10. Okay. And assume I have deleted this array after some point of time. And after this, I am using array. So ARR, let's say 0 is equal to 100. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this code. In all probability, this will not give me any error. Okay, and I can run this code. It may or may not crash, but you know, it's a dangling pointer. So to use address sanitizer, you can provide this particular option in your command line. I'll say minus F sanitize equal to address. I'm not going to use other option which you can see in your autocomplete right now, but just use this. Okay. And if I do a dot out, you can see I am getting this particular error that heap huge after free on this particular address. This is the dangling pointer error. But once you see this output, you know, it has lots of details where exactly the error is. But you are not able to see the file name and the line number where this error is occurring. It is showing somewhere in a.out you are getting this error, but this is not sufficient. For a small programs, it's okay, but for larger programs, it's not. So what you can do, you can give minus G option. Once you give this option, you will get this line number of the file. Okay, it's saying line number eight. So what's there in line number eight? Cat minus n, let's see first dot cpp. Line number eight is arr zero is equal to 100. So this is the place where the dangling pointer is. So this is how you can see that dangling pointer issues in your C and C++ code. Now the other type of memory related issue you can identify with address sanitizer is stack and heap buffer overflow. So let me go back to the same file. Okay, so let me get rid of these three things. So what is stack buffer overflow? I can create a stack variable of, you know, in type 10 or size 10. And if I say ARR 10 equal to 100, you know, if I have created of size 10, it should be the index should be between 0 to 9. The index cannot be 10. Anything beyond 9 is an error. It's a stack buffer overflow error. So if I go ahead and compile this code, uh, let me clear. Let me compile with the same set of parameters. And when I go ahead and run it, you can see I am getting 
stack buffer overflow okay similarly uh, i can get if this is a dynamic one i can create a dynamic array as new in 10 and if i try to do this this is a heap buffer overflow because the index should be 0 to 9 so let me clear it and compile with the same parameters and if i go ahead and run it you can see that heap buffer overflow it's written and just to make sure that it is not returning any error if i am making 10 to 9 okay so let me compile it and if i run it nothing will be displayed but it is displaying a memory leak it's saying leak of 40 byte is detected it's detected because you know i am not clearing this memory which means i have to say delete you know arr so compile with the same set of parameters and when i say an a dot of just end of program so no error is reported now you also realized while looking at this that how leak sanitizer works so leak sanitizer is part of address sanitizer it is telling me that okay this is a leak at this file name line number six okay so i have changed the li line number let me see what's there in line number six which means this line was leaking because delete wasn't there okay now you have to understand one thing most modern c programs are written in stl so can sanitizer works in stl if it doesn't then it will not be able to help us because most of the modern c code is written in stl i am talking about c not the c language okay but the good news is that it works with stl but there are a few things you need to take care of so let me go back to you know my file again and let me include two files array and vector okay now let's first talk about the you know this stack buffer overflow error let me create an array of type int size 3 is equal to 1 2 3 Okay, and uh, give me type ARR. And if I try to access ARR3 is equal to 200, you can see that 3 is not a valid index because the index should be 0, 1, 2, one of these. But if I go ahead and run this STL code, let me first compile with the sanitizer and go ahead and run it. You can see that stack buffer overflow is actually detected. Okay, now if I change my array to a, vector, to a vector so let me change it to vector and let me go ahead and compile this again oops sorry uh, i forgot the syntax of vector there is no second parameter over here let me compile it again and if i go ahead and run it you can see that it is giving me heap buffer overflow okay so this was expected but let me change the code and show you something very interesting. Now, instead of assigning vector array directly, I'll let me just get rid of this. Okay, I'll say vector dot pushback 10. Let me print this line two times, uh, 20, 30, and now I'm accessing the ARR3 over here. So what do you think should happen? Actually, it should give me the same heap buffer overflow error, right? But if you go ahead, compile it, okay, what happened now? It's not vector dot pushback, it's variable, vector variable dot pushback. I don't know why I did that, okay? So if you go ahead and compile it, nothing happened, no error. Why? Because STL containers, the allocation of dynamic memory is not linear or straightforward, okay? So what exactly happening over here is that when you created a vector, 
So initially vector doesn't have any you know space allocated to store any data. When I insert first item, the space allocated is one. When I insert second item, the space allocated is doubled because in the vector based on the compiler implementation the size of a vector once it uh, exhausts its uh, you know available capacity increases to 1.5x or 2 so here if you increase by two times it will be 2 and then to insert third item the size will increase as 4 okay so that's why the capacity of vector is now 4 that's why this is not giving any error so we can check the capacity with you know here are dot capacity functions on vector and you can see that the capacity is 4 okay similarly if you go back and you know if you push again something here let's say i am pushing 40 capacity is 4 no problem now i am pushing again 50 okay now the capacity will be doubled which will be a, actually you know eight which means if i go ahead and try to access the array index seven there will not be any problem okay so let me clear the screen and compile it once again and run the a dot out you can see the capacity is eight and end of the program no error happened so when you are using stl like vector and other containers any STL container which is using dynamic memory, uh, when you are using sanitizer, you need to make sure that you have to unit test with your min and max range. Only then you will be able to identify if there is any issues. Otherwise, you will not be able to do that. This was one example of that. And it has to be understood. Otherwise, you know, you may miss on to some of the things that sanitizer has to offer. Now today, People ask you to avoid global variables, which is, you know, correct to a large extent. Okay. But if you are using global variables, you can get similar global buffer overflow also. So let me create in a global variable of array of type 10 initialized to minus one. And inside here, I'm trying to access global 10 equal to 100. Let me go ahead and compile it and you can see that global buffer overflow is being printed over here. Now why this is important because when you are creating a very simple small 10 lines 20 lines file it will be easy for you to see the errors where it is happening but if you are using you know huge project which has you know hundreds of files with thousands of lines of code it will be extremely useful to get to know what kind of error memory buffer overflow error you can actually rectify this in a proper way because you know just because you are seeing some global buffer overflow it's not maybe possible to just get rid of the global variable in the whole project in the hundreds and thousands of lines of code because you don't know where all it's being used in what way it is being you know referred and what are the functionality that's going to be impacted so that's why type of error is extremely important okay so we have already seen how the leak sanitizer also work with address sanitizer so this is the basic introduction to sanitizers which you can make use in your cnc plus plus programs to help you understand any memory related issue that may come while running your code i do hope and believe that this video was useful to all of you thank you all thanks for watching we will meet again until the next time we meet good day goodbye you take care